everybody. I'm Sean Reynolds from Sports and about to be joined by Ken Weeb from the Winnipeg Free Press. Together we are Kenny and Rennie. This is the Kenny and Rennie post game show after the final game of the regular season 2023-24. How time flies as the Winnipeg Jets win 4 to 2 uh on a night they are absolutely driven by their youth on a night that they secure home ice advantage in the Western Conference Final should they make it to the Western Conference Final with a victory in this game. Um, starting there, should probably uh, uh, do a couple of retractions. Uh, I, I guess last show, I was under the impression uh, before we went into the show live TV. This is how these kind of things go. But uh, last show, I was under the impression that seeding took precedence over points in the conference, and it wasn't until the Stanley Cup Final that you took over um, uh, based on points thought it was a weighted system it clearly wasn't that it is all about points so the winnipeg jets getting two points and surpassing the vancouver canucks means that the winnipeg jets uh are going to uh have no matter who they would play if they made the western conference final they would have home ice advantage which is good news for mark chipman and good news for rick bonus who would love to have the advantage of the last change for four games in a seven game series there no doubt that led to some of my reasoning on the uh uh me thinking it didn't really matter when you know bringing up uh uh the younger players for this game uh now, regardless, if that game wouldn't have mattered to the degree that it mattered here tonight, and you know, the Jets, the way that they approach it, the Canucks, the way they approach it, they kind of did approach it like it didn't matter as much. Uh, but that wouldn't have changed the fact that that, uh, like, and I'll tell you, coming out of that room, talking with Chibrikov after uh, he scored that goal and what it meant to him, talking to Brad Lambert, what that point meant to him, uh, how they had trouble sleeping before the game, how nervous they were. Uh, that was a bad take. That was a stanky take, me suggesting that it wasn't uh, well, didn't matter for those young players. Uh, clearly it did. Um, I think I probably got like a little zoned in on the idea of like the, the game not mattering and maybe forgot a little bit what it means to those players. It clearly meant the world to them. And and now, uh, it, it definitely, because the game meant something, I think it means a little bit more, no doubt. If the Winnipeg Jets did happen to go to the Western Conference Final, and if they did happen to meet the Vancouver Canucks uh, in the Western Conference Final, I don't think that's going to happen. And let me tell you, I don't think it's going to happen, and it has nothing to do with lack of faith in the Winnipeg Jets, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but um, th this this is a scenario where if that happens, Nikita Chip, Chipperkov, no matter where he is at that point, will be able to look at the Winnipeg Jets and say, you see that? You see that home ice advantage? It's my game winner who sent them there. So I uh, just wanted to rectify those two takes. They were bad takes. They were stanky takes. They they are wafting in the air uh, as I wait for that to, to rot and decompose. I wouldn't say they're break up the third line uh, stanky take, but um, hey, I like to point out when I'm wrong. Uh, thank God I don't have to do it that often uh, on this show. Regardless, what a night by those players. Uh, and Cole Perfetti, I'll start right there. Cole Perfetti was, I thought, even before he got that second goal, I thought Cole Perfetti was the best player on the ice. Lots to get to in conversations. Want, remind us to come back to this and Cole Perfetti and how he has played down the stretch with the opportunities that he's had down the stretch. Throw Logan Stanley in there, what the coaching staff has done to ready players to walk into this lineup and succeed. And I think Cole Perfetti is the best example of that. I think the Logan Stanley uh, is a really great example of that. But even on a night like tonight, Chibrikov uh, and uh, and Brad Lambert, the way that they were able to come in and make an immediate impact, it says something about the way a team is set up, the way it plays its system, the way it is coached, and the sim symbiotic nature of, of your parent club and your AHL club for players to come in and be able to play the way those players played tonight. They made a difference. The Winnipeg Jets win tonight, and you got a good look at the future of the Winnipeg Jets. That, to me, uh, was impressive on this night, uh, no doubt. Jennings Trophy secured 
for the Winnipeg Jets. Eight straight wins, hottest team in the NHL uh, uh, going into the playoffs. That absolutely means something. Uh, I'll just say uh, this to me, uh, Rick Bonus had talked about going into this game that the most important thing, despite the fact that he sat, you know, his starting goaltender, his number one defender, maybe his biggest toughest, roughest defender, uh, his two most dynamic offensive players, and maybe, in my opinion, no doubt, the best shutdown player in the NHL in Adam Lowry. Despite that, he wanted this team to come through, play Rick Bonus hockey, and have good habits heading into the playoffs. I think you can put a big uh, tick in that box. Uh, just all around, I don't know that anyone could have imagined the Winnipeg Jets looking like they did in the last eight games of the season and rolling into the playoffs like this. Uh, if you're not excited yet, Winnipeg Jets fans, what's wrong with you, A, and B, just get there. Time to get excited, folks. Time to get excited for a wholly unrelated reason, and that's because I'm about to play uh, the best music in the business to bring in the man with the best music in the business. Here comes Kenny, everybody. Ken, it was suggested to me not too long ago by a viewer who messaged me uh, saying that, uh, hey, you're losing weight. I think you're a little bit grumpy uh, because of it. Um, and I think they may have hit that bang on. I noticed someone else in the comments section a little while ago told me I needed to eat a Snickers. And listen, hey, losing weight, trying to fit into these suits that were once so perfectly uh, tailored for you by Frankie and the boys at Vittorio Rossi. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, there may be it some is not. truth to that. There may be some truth to, to grumpy Rennie. Like we've heard of all these, you know, pessimistic Rennie, optimistic Rennie, grumpy Rennie. They're, they're all things. And I just, I, I thank you all for just you know, monitoring my moods and pointing it out at every stage. Uh, I really They're just showing that they care, everybody. They're just showing that they care. No doubt. And I will say the reason I say this is to point out this was a great Vittorio Rossi number uh, that I haven't been able to fit in for the last little while and put it on just in time for playoffs. Uh, I did some grinding right before we got into playoffs here. The, the, the It's not done. There's still a number of suits that I'm not able to fit into, but I plan to continue going through the playoffs. Uh, and doing just that because when the guys down at Vittorio Rossi, Frankie and the boys make you look like a million bucks, you better be able to lose the weight to fit into the suits that make you a million bucks. That's the kind of commitment you need to make when you go down to Vittorio Rossi on Corden Avenue. And if you do do that, you know what to do. Walk in loudly proclaimed Kenny and Rennie sent you. Ask for Frankie and the boys and they will do you upright. And if you can't get down to the weight that those suits were fitted in. Well, just head on back there and they'll take them over for you. It's fine. You can make it happen. Ken, uh, looking good tonight as you always are, like the Jets did once again on a night where they bring in the youth who drive the bus on this night. They looked good. They looked like the Winnipeg Jets to me in spite of the fact that there was a lot of different players in there. What'd you see? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and this is sort of what I was hinting at when we talked about the energy maybe provided by a couple of young kids who had great seasons in the American League, or are, I should say are having great seasons in the American Hockey League. Uh, quickly, I, I thought that Brad Lambert uh, showed sort of some of those glimpses of two camps ago when he sort of took the training camp by storm. He looks way more comfortable with the puck on his stick. I thought it's very his... Mark Shifley esque in his first uh, camp with the Winnipeg Jets. Anyways, go yeah, on. Yeah, no doubt. I, I thought that he was, uh, I love the way he transported the puck. I thought he kept his head up a lot. I mean, this is a guy who is still pretty new in terms of playing center at the professional level, Sean. I really think that he's taken his game uh, up a tick now. Again, what does that mean for for September, October, we don't know yet, and we won't know yet until we know if the Jets can sign Sean Monahan or not. But what we do know is this player is absolutely knocking on the door of the NHL no matter when that time comes. Uh, I loved his confidence in the game, and 
also too, I, I just love the enthusiasm. I mean, Sean, I covered the AHL for a decade and I've seen a lot of those guys get those call-ups, whether they were journeymen or young players who were very early in their pro careers. And I absolutely love the enthusiasm from Nikita Chibrikov, Sean, uh, that fist pump is an all world special. And Hey, this wasn't a, this wasn't a, this wasn't a toss in goal and an eight, two win. Like the guy literally comes up and fires up the GWG. It is a perfect shot off the post and in against someone who is garnering plenty of attention in terms of both the Vesna and NHL all-star ballots that are due tomorrow. Um, you know, I love the enthusiasm. I love the shot that the camera crew caught of Nino Niederreiter shaking his hand on the bench. Uh, just absolutely tremendous and, you know, good for him. And, you know, it, it's just an odd stroke of luck. I happened to be walking through True North Square, Sean, before the game today. And uh, Chibrikov was walking down the hallway. Um, I believe he must have been staying at True North Square or whatever. But um, Chibrikov had the uh, sharp suit on like he was dressed uh by the boys at uh, Vittorio Rossi by Frankie and the boys uh, looking sharp in the green suit. He looked like a guy who is absolutely nervous and he admitted as such after the game, but found a way to himself, found a way to get himself ready. And then to deliver that type of moment in your first NHL game, what a memory for him that that is going to be, uh, you know, again, unfortunate for Lambert that they didn't announce the assist in real time. Uh, but still he, he was involved in the play. Nice play to get it down low. Uh, I have follow gets it in front of Velarde. Absolute highlight, real special patience. Um, you know, those two guys both jumped in and did an excellent job. And uh, as you touched on, I thought Cole Perfetti, just another, uh, another great job of showing the coaching staff that he's going to be, he's going to be ready uh, if his number is called or so I should say when his number is called, not if, um, you know, great job by him. Now, of course, you know, we can't ignore the fact that here's a guy who had such an incredible first half of the year, Sean. And, you know, there's going to be, no, not necessarily today, but there's going to be some level of frustration that he missed out on the bonus that comes along with 20 gold, right? I mean, I think it's 225 or $250,000 bonus. So, I mean, again, whether it was the healthy scratches or the, or the long stretch of play where it wasn't going as smoothly, uh, but that's an off-season issue. Uh, the, for right now, Cole Perfetti knows that he is ready for the Stanley Cup playoffs. We'll see when that comes, whether it's going to be game one or not. That could depend on our, uh, the status of Morgan Barron, though you and I think are in agreement here uh, that David Gustafson probably gets the call in game one if Barron can't go. And again, we don't know if that's going to be the case. All we know is that Morgan Barron did not skate today. We'll see if he skates tomorrow. And then by, uh, yeah, sorry, Dom Zappi, a bonus of 212000 not two hundred fifty. So uh, thanks for confirming that. Um, yeah, Perfetti, great job. And otherwise, Sean, I mean, Jennings Trophy is, is like I said, it's kind of an arbitrary award in the grand scheme of things, Sean. But at the same time, it's not arbitrary for this group because of exactly what Dylan DeMello said in the scrums yesterday when he joined the Jets in the trade with the Ottawa Senators. The Jets were a run and gun team that year. And now they are the team that allowed the fewest goals in the National Hockey League. We know that elite goaltending played a role in that. There's no doubt. But what played a even larger role was the commitment to structure. And that's something that they have been trying to do for a long time. And now they have finally, they've got a little, that hardware is, is proof that it works when the commitment level is that high. Um, let's get into, okay. I, I, I promise this. So let's get this out of the way. I want to talk about Perfetti. I want to talk about Logan Stanley. I want to talk about Chibrikov. I want to talk about, um, uh, Brad Lambert. I want to talk about Rick bonus and his coaching staff and what they've done to make it so that when guys like Gustafson come into the lineup, they hit all the aforementioned guys. I was just talking about AJF at every point this season, when the jets have plugged someone into the lineup, they've plugged in with electricity and they've made differences in the game. Uh, what do you see from Rick bonus and his coaching staff, or maybe the organization as a whole, because we know Rick bonus likes to give the credit down the line to the coaches in the AHL, to the scouts, sure. uh, to those players being exactly what he said. The guys who are paid to watch those guys, every game were that in the NHL and they or in the AHL and showed it in the NHL. But what are you seeing from this organization as a whole in that 
when it is taking and plugging guys into the lineup, we're seeing what seems to be difference makers rather than guys who are making mistakes, who are stumbling when they first come into the NHL. What do you, what are you seeing, Ken? Yeah, I mean, it's an extension. I mean, and this is what Rick Bonus talked about, you know, when he got to Winnipeg, the first training camp or the first development camp. I mean, um, this is what it, the goal always is. And yes, by extent, of course, he credited the coaching staff when you asked him about it the other day. And today, the postgame presser was filled with plaudits for Mark Morrison and the Manitoba Moose staff. When he says you want the team to play the same, that is an extension to the Manitoba Moose. They want them to play the same game. And Sean, the Moose are an incredible story as well. They lost 11 in a row at one point this year, but they made the playoffs and they have the ability to have guys jump right back in and make a contribution immediately and not eight year veterans. These are young kids very early in their professional journey coming in and not looking out of place whatsoever. They're able, it wasn't only offensive contributions from those two players either. They were sound defensively. And they didn't make a lot of mistakes. And, and that's what they need uh, in order to have success. And Sean, you said it. I mean, other guys, Dominic Tony Notto played. He was on the ice in the last minute of a game on December 31st in Minnesota, blocking shots, right? He's, he's, not, he's not in game 82. He may not be in a playoff game, but if they needed him, the Jets would be confident enough to put him in and not be nervous, right? I mean, like you said, Al Axel Janssen Fialbi, same sort of deal. Um, you know, the Jets could have called up Kyle Kappa Bianco today. They could have called up Billy Hanel and played one or both of them. But, you know, they had two extra defensemen. They didn't want to roll with an entirely different uh, defense core. So uh, I think the coaching staff has done a tremendous job. Uh, there's done, There's been a number of issues that they've sorted themselves through. Uh, during the course of the season, including Rick being away on two separate occasions. And yeah, I, I mean, this is a this is very good coaching staff. And it also, Sean, as Rick said today, coaching staff can't be successful without the buy-in from the players. And the buy-in from the players extends all the way down to the American Hockey League. And, and that's that's what every organization strives for, but not every organization can can achieve. Um, I just wanted to respond to this puddle jumper says, I think it's just organizational depth, just finally hitting big boy levels. I don't agree with this. And I think that you mentioned AJF. He's the perfect reason, right? Like it, it's easy to just say that Rick bonus went out and the organization put a whole bunch of depth together and everything's going to work out fine. Um, AJF is the perfect example of this. AJF is just a find who, you know, a lot of other teams would have passed over. There's not a lot of teams around the league who would have looked and said, that guy, we're going to grab him and we're going to put him in here. Uh, AJF is a guy who in most, uh, now I think down the stretch of last season when he was in the lineup for an extended period of time, he started coming back down to earth, but the one thing you have to give him credit for is when he was given opportunities, he jumped into the lineup and he made it happen. This isn't easy. What you saw tonight for Brad Lambert to do what he did, for Chibrikov to do what they did, players with much greater pedigrees can come into games like this and not show the way that these players showed here. I mean, you want to take a look. There's a lot of people who would have thought a player like Dylan Holloway in Edmonton would have like really hit and really blown up, blown up by now. Broberg is another guy there that everyone had pegged as this guy who was going to walk into the NHL and it was going to be easy. There's something to be said about how the Winnipeg Jets and the Winnipeg Jets coaching staff has handled this before. And I do think that we saw some, uh, we do, we did see some comments in the chat room over the years suggesting that Rick Bonus and his staff were just like, uh, um, uh, uh, the previous regime and that they hated young players, uh, I say to this, and this is, I guess, the point I wanted to really get to with Perfetti. A lot of people will have looked at Perfetti's situation right now because let's be honest with ourselves. I don't think it will be the last time we see him this year uh, because I think, you know, playoffs are playoffs. But there is a chance that Cole Perfetti has played his last game this season. 
because it's been identified. I think what I was talking about, that he's got to be a top six guy. He doesn't go on the third line. He doesn't go on the fourth line. They've got other guys to play those roles. So you're going to need an injury or someone just kind of falling apart in the playoffs in order for him to get in. Now, I, I think... Playoffs are hard. They're a grind. I think we'll see Perfetti, but there's a chance he doesn't get in there. But the way Cole Perfetti is playing right now gets into the lineup and you see what you see from him right now. And let's remember that Cole Perfetti is kind of the guy that when the Jets lost six straight games was was one of the guys who snapped the Jets out of it with a couple of really great back-to-back performances to kind of start the engine for the Winnipeg Jets. He's the guy who went up to the old-timey plane and grabbed the propeller and spun it around to get the Winnipeg Jets going and how fl- high are they flying right now. But I would argue Cole Perfetti, knowing his role now, pops in and makes sure he does it. He's not pouting. He's not upset. He's not looking at this as something to get really angry about, despite the fact of what you're talking about, Ken, of him losing out on money by not getting as much opportunities down the stretch. Cole Perfetti looks to me like a guy who's A, waiting champing at the bit for his opportunity, but be extremely confident in himself that if he does draw into the lineups in the playoffs, he can be a difference maker for this team. Logan Stanley finally got to the point, had a good chat with him today where he feels like he can be a difference maker for this team. It's easy to lose guys by sending them up to the press box. Give this coaching staff their flowers at every turn they've created. The mentality with Gustafson, with Perfetti, with Stanley, with AJF, with these players tonight, that if you get in the lineup, you are part of this team. You can make a difference, and you need to be ready to do that. He's got that out of them. This coaching staff has got that out of them. Give this coaching staff credit. They did a phenomenal job with this lineup and making everyone feel like they are a piece of things. In trying circumstances and with a number of players, they've pulled it off. Give them their flowers. Yeah, and the last thing too, I mean, you talked about how difficult it was for Lambert and Chibrikov to just jump into the lineup, Sean. Not only that, they played an American Hockey League game in Milwaukee yesterday. They had no Woke morning up skate. Four in the morning. Yes. I mean, this is the, you know, going, getting called into the principal's office or the coach's office as a young player. Lambert talked about it today. He was nervous. Why am I getting called into the coach's office? I thought I was playing pretty well. <laughs> and then the you go from being nervous to going, holy smokes, I'm getting my first chance in the NHL. But, oh, by the way, it entails, you know, getting up at the crack of dawn, taking two flights and getting yourself to Winnipeg. And then, by the way, good luck trying to sleep in the afternoon for your pregame nap because you're making your NHL debut on home ice, again, you know, in a battle for, you know, top spot among Canadian teams, second in the West, all of those things. Again, I agree with the coaching staff comment exceptional job at both levels uh, exceptional job by you know identification by pro scouts and all of those things and also exceptional job by the players to be ready and to soak that in completely and yeah i mean how about you let's just quickly get into this i mean it's cold. hold on before it, you do be because you talked about those players getting the 4 a.m wake up call yep, might gotcha. as well say they got the pristine <laughs> roofing wake up call this morning the best wake up call of their lives which it would be the best wake up call for you if you were to wake up north and rick at one two four nine eight one six two eight nine if you need or have any needs of roofing siding exteriors all those kind of things we know that they will do a bang up phenomenal job for you uh you can also call pristine roofing at 1204-237-7663. Uh, give them the pristine roofing wake up call uh, and remember their pay it forward program. They're handing out a free roof to someone who needs one, but may not be able to pay for it. If you know someone in your life who could use that kind of help, get a hold of pristine roofing, pass that name along. And Ken, before we do move on, why don't you give Sweet Lou a shout out? Yeah, right on. For folks who have realty needs you would like to have met, you can contact our maid man, Lou Ferlin at Royal LePage Dynamic Realty, 204-791-9971 or at the office, 204-989-5000. His email is lou at louferlin.ca. That's L-O-U at L-O-U-F-U-R-L-A-N dot C-A. Lou Ferlin, excellent realtor, excellent human being, and excellent supporter of the community, including this podcast. All right. Um, you had something you wanted to yeah, say? Yeah, just ja- Jack on? Adams. I mean, I know that yeah, I know well, this award. This award sometimes goes to, and oh, sorry, I shouldn't say sometimes. Often goes to the the overachiever award rather than you know right. 
best job. And again, the biggest turnaround. Award, there's tons right? of great candidates. I mean, whether it's you know Chris Knobloch in Edmonton taking over from um, Jay Woodcroft, whether it's Andrew Brunette doing an exceptional job with the Nashville Predators, whether it's Peter Laviolette leading the Rangers. I mean, I Rick Tockett. Rick, Talk Rick Tockett is deserving, Sean. But I mean, the Jets finished ahead of. The Vancouver Canucks, I know that the Canucks were a non-playoff team, and it's probably slightly more impressive on for scale, but man, uh, it's hard to argue with the job that Rick Bonus and his entire coaching staff have done here. I agree. I think the talk, it's probably going get, to get the award, but I mean, but based on what we've, I mean, the bonus for us, Sean, Rick Tockett, yes, they had to change their culture to a certain degree. Jets had to change their culture and their structure. And so to me, the fact that they were able to do it in a two year span here uh, is very impressive. I mean, Rick would be a deserving candidate finalist, whatever it is. Uh, I just don't know that he's getting enough credit around the NHL. Not even close. Now the argument against Rick bonus is that this team last year showed that it was an upper echelon team for a good chunk of the season and then absolutely fell apart. Um, so there's going to be people out there who say, well, the, the Vancouver Canucks were a team lost for the better part of a decade, trying to find their way back and, and you get a coach who comes in and not only solves that problem, but has that team near the top of the league and the top of the conference for the vast majority of the season. It's a compelling argument. I'll say this about Rick bonus. Um, the, the problem. So the problem that they're trying to fix in Vancouver is getting that team to kind of wake up and get to the playoffs. And that's huge, right? It, let's be honest with ourselves. Sure. It's huge. What he did. I don't know that there were a lot of people who looked at the Vancouver Canucks at the beginning of the year or based on what they'd done in years past and thought this team is going to challenge for the number one team in the Western conference. Um, the Winnipeg Jets have always been an extremely capable team. It's why year after year after year, you get a lot of pundits who thought that they were going to go on to win the Stanley Cup. I still think they were the best team in the league in 2018. I think they were the de facto Stanley Cup winners in 2019 before they started this pattern of falling apart down the stretch, which they've continued on year after year, which ended up biting Rick Bonus in the butt last year with this team. It was kind of the final frontier for this team. The Winnipeg Jets have a habit of going backing into the playoffs. And I don't say that like just kind of barely getting in, but 2019, they were phenomenal in, two, in the 2018. And then the calendar switch and they were pretty poor down the stretch. And then we've seen this happen over and over again, the year that they missed the playoffs, starting out hot and, and kind of falling backwards. This was the job for Rick Bonus was to fix this with this team, a job that in the end started under Paul Maurice's watch that he was never able to figure out. This was the final front. The final frontier for the Vancouver Canucks was getting into the playoffs. The final frontier for the Winnipeg Jets was finding out why this team seemed to fall apart as the season went on and then showed their worst at the most important time of the year. Now it's preemptive to say this, not hanging up the mission accomplished banner, but Rick bonus fixed that and put a massive explanation exclamation point on it by having his team with a 10th of the season ready to go absolutely catch fire and start doing all the things it was supposed to be doing and leading his team to be the stingiest defensive team in all of the NHL. There are a whole bunch of reasons why if you wanted to take a look at this and give the, the trophy to Rick bonus, it should go to him. I personally think Rick bonus, if you are being objective and you are taking a look at the, the importance of the regular season is not just the points that you get. It's the team that you are sending into the playoffs and how capable that team is. I think Rick bonus has created an extremely capable team that if you, I mean, I'll say it, you put it up against a team like the Vancouver Canucks. I wouldn't give the Canucks a hope in H-E double hockey sticks that they would knock off the team that Rick bonus has playing the way they are. I think that needs to be taken into account. I think him fixing that problem. And I think it puts him for me easily, easily in the top three candidates for that award. Uh, and I think he should have serious consideration for it. Um, the, the job, the, the job that needed to be done with the Winnipeg jets as a hockey team got done. 
by by Rick Bonus this year, and that's worth consideration. Um, we are gonna do something. Uh, before we do that, let's just g- give a shout out to uh, uh, the 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 work that we saw from this team put together, and how much it paid off for them to pull up the players that they paid off. Uh, or excuse me, that paid off in this game. And hey, if you're looking to pay off high interest credit cards or debt, we suggest you go talk to our friends at Cambrian Credit Union about their payoff loan. They can show you how taking out a loan to pay off your debt actually gets you debt-free faster. And you can save thousands of dollars. Go to cambrian.mb.ca to book an appointment online. Ken, is there anything that you really want to dig into in this game that you feel you need? Okay, let's. Uh, sorry, we got to do this. Okay, we're going to do a hits and misses segment because this is the end of the season season 82 games so we're going to go over a lot of the things that we said kind of at the beginning of the season and we're going to go over what we got right and what we got wrong uh, but before we do that we would be uh remiss am i using that word good properly? word yes you um are. to not mention lauren brassois who finishes this season on a high note um go ken uh, tremendous. I mean, again, this is another great example. Uh, Lauren, you know, the irony is just dripping here. The fact that Lauren Brassois will not get himself um, on the trophy that he so eloquently or <laughs> vehemently helped the Jets obtain throughout his 23 appearances and 22 starts. Uh, he basically put an exclamation point on a exceptional season for a quote unquote backup um, who, you know, had to go through some stuff mentally this year, you know, showed that he could stay healthy for a season. Uh, this is a career high in games, a game started at the NHL level. And he had, you know, he had to be sharp. If he wasn't sharp, the jets have to either share the trophy with the Florida Panthers, the Jennings trophy I'm talking about, or they may have lost it entirely. If he hadn't been as sharp as he was tonight, I know he wasn't overworked, but he had to make some pretty darn good saves. Sean, uh, this is a guy we've talked about for months now, uh, really has set himself up for a, you know, secure off season. Uh, you know, again, who knows how long the deal is going to be and he's not going to break the bank, but uh, I'm here to tell you right now, he's going to be going to a job share situation at worst. And he also could be heading somewhere where, you know, maybe he gets himself that starting job that he has been coveting um, 15 and five record 15, five and two his goals against for the season folks. 45 goals against in total, a 2.00 goals against average, a 927 save percentage. And yes, I understand the sample size is smaller uh, than Connor Hellebuck's, but exceptional numbers, exceptional job. Um, He will be missed. He is a great human being, well-deserving of the Masterton Trophy nomination he got from the Winnipeg chapter of the PHWA. And... I know some folks in this market may not love it, but I could see a scenario where uh, he rejoins the Vegas Golden Knights. I've also mentioned the Toronto Maple Leafs. I know you've mentioned the LA Kings. Uh, There are several intriguing scenarios uh, for Lauren Brassois moving forward, but for now he will stay as sharp as possible and be ready in case his number is called. Uh, I still think the Jets have the best goalie tandem in the National Hockey League and not just because they gave up the fewest goals against. It works for them because they push one another, but they also support one another. And Lauren Brassois is going to get himself a you know a good situation next year, but he'd like to do it after another long, lengthy Stanley Cup run. Um, I'm going to uh, just tackle this one on head. I'm pretty sure this is my guy, Terry Stapleton, who I worked with at CBC. That's who's in the picture. Anyway, uh, Terry, good to see you here. I know he always tells me he li- listens to the show. I think this is just an absolutely terrible take. Uh, honestly, um, he says, as good as LB played in that hell, he deserved to win the Jennings solo. Could that have been Bones' reason for not getting LB into more qualifying games? The answer to that would most definitely be no. I think the answer to this is Rick Bonus down the stretch. One of the things that he's been trying to do is he's been trying to play all the right notes on the piano here um, is, is to set Connor Hellebuck up so that he's ready to perform in the playoffs because as it was pointed out by Rick Bonus or Bick Ronis, um, was it Bick Ronis or was it Mar- I'm not sure which one, but pointed out that, and, and it's something I entirely agree with. We and someone had talked about uh, um, Connor Hellebuck being the best goalie of his generation, and it being not close or anything like that. He's in the same 
generation is the big cat out of Tampa and the playoff success there that that goaltender has is uncomparable compared to anyone in his generation. You can't just take the a, a good regular season. Like I've said in the past here, um, you need to, Connor Hellebuck needs to get to a point where he puts his stamp on the playoffs the way every single good goaltender that we always talk about historically has done in their career. He has to do that yet. He knows he has to do that. But to go back to this, this is, uh, and this will be one of my takes that aged well, but if, if there's one thing, and, and I know that this wasn't purposeful, I know it wasn't a snub. I know that uh, Rick Bonus is looking at just trying to make sure that Connor Hellebuck is in a good spot. But I lament the idea that uh, that Lauren Rousseau does not get his name on this trophy. I believe he misses it by two games, Ken. No yep, correct. doubt about it. Lauren Brassois deserves to have his name on this trophy to ignore his contribution. And what he's done to this team this year is to try and suggest that he didn't really do much while Connor Hellebuck uh, did. Uh, the numbers do not bear this out in any way at all. Uh, this, uh, Terry, Terry, I'm going to see you soon. Uh, and we can talk about it at that time. But until then, this is, hey, I had a bad take yesterday uh, when or b- two days ago, game, two days ago, when I talked about this not being a game that mattered overly much for those young players. This somehow I had to apologize for this take. I'm going to expect an <laughs> apology from you, Terry, for putting this take up there. Um, let's get to uh, um, let's get to our hits and misses. Let's do that. Let's go. I, I asked Ken before this to make a list of his hits and misses this year, the things that he thought he got right that aged well at the beginning of the year, the things that he got wrong. Uh, let's get to it, Ken, because uh, it could be a long list for both of us. Here. <laughs> a long list of misses. I hope it's a long list of hits. Uh, well, I mean, again, I had Hellebuck around 60 starts and 22 for Bressois. I had Hellebuck as a Around, among the Vesna finalists, uh, about you know, big season for Shifley, Morrissey staying at that level. I thought Pionk being a bounce back player was incredibly important. Um, you know, we thought the Jets would be more structured. Adam Lowry is a great captain. Uh, some of the misses, I would say, I overvalued, you know, maybe overestimated the contribution maybe Rasmus Kapari was going to make based on a strong training camp. Uh, certainly, you know. Lowry's line and again I, I'm I'm quite confident with the premise behind my theory but um, certainly the fact the coaches love that line and they became probably the best one of the best lines if not the best line in the NHL uh, certainly happy to own that one in terms of the receipts but again I think but the reasoning was sound but it wasn't going to be uh, you know certainly didn't wasn't something that the coaches aligned with uh, Ehlers having a big year Jets both you and I Sean I think that one of our best takes of the entire season was when um, the Jets were trying to make it sound like they weren't going to make any other additions after Sean Monahan or take any big swings. I think both of us were pretty confident that that was not going to be the case. And, you know, again, people can debate how impactful Tyler Toffoli has been, but I mean, that was still a the big swing that they took um, outside of that. Uh, that's probably where I'll start, I guess. Um, okay. Well, Okay, I've got I've got a long list here. Let's start with my misses. Good. Okay, Good. Uh, Jets depth. I talked about the Jets depth at the beginning of the year. I had talked about the removal of of Blake Wheeler and the removal sure. of Pierre Luc Dubois and adding in the three players in Gabe Velarde, um, Gabe Velarde, Alex Iafalo, and Rasmus Kapari did not really add up to more uh, a ton more depth to me. Uh, what I slept on was the advancements of other players like uh like Gus uh like Cole Perfetti um and the internal growth is what lended to that depth until they got to the playoffs uh or sorry to the trade deadline and then you add players like Sean Monahan, Tyler Toffoli of course you're going to be adding more depth in that situation there but I slept on the Jets depth uh Appleton off line three at the beginning of the year I had said if that line was going to be a full-on extremely successful third line uh you need a a higher score than Mason Appleton. 
Appleton kind of appeased that in the idea that he scored a lot out of the gate. But in the end, that's not the success of that line. And I've talked about that. And uh, Mason Appleton, I am completely convinced. I say this time and again, he's the tip of the spear. He's the first guy in. He's the initial disruptor that those guys play off of. Uh, it's not the same when he's not there. He definitely adds to what that third line is. So that was a tough one for me. This level of Gabe Velarde, uh, I did not necessarily see see this coming and maybe you shouldn't have passed past uh, um, behavior is a good predictor. He was a 0.65 point per game player the year before that didn't come close to that years before that. So not only did he take a big step last year, but he took a big step this year to a 0.77 points per game player, his play around the net. You saw it tonight with that goal that he scores. He is so money in tight and so knows how to manipulate a goaltender in tight. We saw it with that goal that he scores through the the legs against the national predators tonight's another good example of that didn't see that coming hadn't seen enough of gabe velarde but i slept on just how good he would be and this one ken at the beginning of the year you picked the winnipeg jets to finish third in the central yep. division i picked them to miss the playoffs we both missed by a massive margin equal misses i think <laughs> in this case so let's just call that one a wash <laughs> I mean, we both missed, you know, you can't always, yeah. you know, whether I whether missed by missed, a whole two points. I missed, whether, was it, or is you, it one, <laughs> whether you, Hey, they finished second in the conference and you had them oh, third man. in their division. When you put it like that, sometimes when you miss oh, the bullseye buddy. off to the side and someone yeah. misses the target altogether, they're still both misses. If whatever helps you sleep that. at night, buddy, whatever helps Let's you sleep that. at night. Another miss of mine, uh, I had uh, the the uh, um, New Jersey Devils representing the Stanley Cup in the East. That is just an absolutely terrible take. I had uh, and still have the uh, Edmonton Oilers winning the Cup because I don't change it from the beginning of the year. Uh, making a good case for themselves as I think the best team in the NHL after their horrid start. Those are my misses. I'm just going to try and a list couple these more up. misses too. I had yeah. Donnie Granato as coach of the year. He was just dismissed by the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. Uh, that was another uh, league wide miss, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was a pretty good year for both of us for the, yeah. for the most part. Okay, I, I also, at... sorry. I also had Nino Niederreiter as an automatic for uh, 20 goals for the eighth time. And unfortunately for, for himself, he uh, got stuck on 18 and then got hurt and then missed those five games. So uh, he will fall two games short. I'm not taking the blame, but um, I don't want to don't want to say gave him the gave him the jinx. There you go. OK, I'm going to li list this off as quick as I can. And the reason I do this is not so much to bury Horowitz myself. A lot of these are actually <laughs> both you and I can. Um, but. I think it's good to show the value that you provide your audience with your analysis. So I think it's important to say there's a lot of things that we said that put, uh, ended up coming to fruition here. So the bones defensive system, we said it early when there was problems and the team wasn't winning out of the gate. We said the way that they're playing, they continue playing like this. They're going to be an extremely good team while they obviously arrived there. The third line take that comes without saying, I've been saying since the beginning, leave that alone. The Rasmus Kapari take that I had at the beginning of the year, one point on him by the season and basically getting pushed out the lineup. There was a ton of people standing on Rasmus Rasmus Kapari at the beginning of the year. A lot of people saying that he was going to be the anchor uh, um, on the best fourth line we've ever seen from the Winnipeg Jets. To me, this was a gifted win for me uh, on this situation. And the obvious part for me was I took a look on the line that he was on at the beginning of the year. Vladislav Nemesnikov was always going to end end up in that spot, which is another take of mine. I'd said about Rasmus, uh, excuse me, about Nemesnikov, that he was going to find his way to center on the fourth line and maybe even the second line, both of which happened, which brings me to Cole Perfetti at the beginning of the year. A lot of people saying that Cole Perfetti was going to walk into that second line position and everything was going to be peachy keen. I called it that he wasn't, it wasn't going to be that easy, that it was a lot to ask from that player. The coaching staff landed on that quickly within the first 10 games and moved on from that. Jets not crumbling entirely down the stretch was something both you and I said. The Jets no different with Lauren Brossois in net and Connor Hellebuck. At the end of the season, Lauren Brossois ends up with both uh, a higher save percentage and a lower goals against average. Uh, this That one 
aged evergreen like sterling steel. Um, and that is again why I've I've got a big problem with Terry's take on that uh on that uh before that Lauren Brassois earned everything he had this year and the Winnipeg Jets responded in kind. Um, both of us kind of talked about the Jets sloppy play before their five and six game losing streaks. We were calling it out before the team was. And then slowly after that, Rick bonus started talking about the stuff we were talking about this show in public that led to problems. The Monaghan pickup, both of us said that it was absolutely uh, a, a great pickup. I remember saying at the time, way better pickup than Lindholm. They didn't have to spend as much. Let's get to, the take uh, uh, that I said about the uh, the Colorado Avalanche being, I think we're seeing the things that I saw in the Colorado Avalanche and the problems that they have. The Casey Middle stat for that trade. I mean, if you would you not have rather traded Bowen Byram for Sean Monahan than Casey Middlestat at this stage, like th th this to me, moving a cornerstone defenseman for that, that was, that was problematic heading into the trade deadline. Both you and I said they needed a two C they needed a line two winger and they needed a seventh defenseman. That's exactly what they went out and got Ken the Dallas stars being a super solid club, which seemed to drive uh MBHA ball hockey, absolutely crazy. And he kept saying, I was a fan of theirs. No, I saw a really good team and, of course, they're the number one team in the division. Shifley, this is kind of going into last season a little bit. Careful what you wish for if you're trying to move Mark Shifley. And that Mark Shifley, I thought, is just a guy who needs a leader to properly follow. I think Lowry getting into that spot and uh, and uh, Shifley following in those footsteps really worked out. Um, and uh, we both also said, I believe we both also said, Perfetti was going to be heading to the Black Aces. That's exactly where he's heading there. Ken, we said a lot of things were going to happen before they happened, and we get those takes from stuff that we talk about with the teams, from patterns that we see. I think this is a really, really good year of analysis for Kenny and Rennie on this show, and I think we brought a lot of value to the people who listen to this show by telling them the direction a lot of things were going to be going. I think we got far more right than we got wrong on this. Show. Hey, that's what we try to aim. We aim to please every time we, we get on the show here. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that it's part of our job to provide analysis and insight. And that's why we got the best chat room in the, uh, in the post game league here. It's good. No it's doubt. good to see. You. No doubt. Okay. Uh, let's get into our Johnson group. Got you covered play of the game. And I'm going to tell you, Ken, to me, I saw the ultimate, the ultimate got you covered Kenny and Rennie OG Johnson group play the, the most ultimate one that and we should have ever it. seen before. Okay, I want it. you to give your, no, you I've take got it. A really it's good. good one. No, 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 you go no, for it. Yeah, no, you I one okay. I'm going to go. All right. So, <clears> oh, so I had one very it. early in the game. There were, yeah. there were a couple better candidates later on. Brad Lambert's assist. Um, saw it uh, in real time, thought he's going to get an assist on that. He didn't get it at first. Um, uh, he ends up getting it. This is an extended possession shift by the Winnipeg Jets. Brad Lambert gets the puck um, on the boards there, and he actually panics a bit, and he turns the puck over. This is a turnover. That never happened. It doesn't end up being a turnover, but this is a turnover because he throws it to a spot where there's a Vancouver Canucks defenseman who's got the board sealed off. Everything's done. He's alleviated all the pressure that the Jets have worked up into that point. Uh, it's gone because he throws the puck. It's a no-look toss. He doesn't see where he's going with it. It's a little bit of a panic play, which you can expect from a young player. And it is a turnover until... <laughs> Alex Iafalo with the ultimate we've got you covered play of the game makes a phenomenal play. Not only does he get to the puck where, when the defender thinks he's got no chance of getting it because he's got the board sealed off, he not only gets his puck on the stick, but he does so in a way where he purposely redirects the puck off the boards into the direction of Gabe Velarde, who gets the puck. No one is expecting it to happen because this is one of these plays where the Vancouver Canucks just think that they've got possession at this point and they're moving into the spots they need to get to to be the outlet for that defender who has just taken what should have been an easy turnover. Phenomenal play by Alex Iafalo. Not only turns a play that was a turnover into a non-turnover, but turns it into the first point 
of Brad Lambert's career because he doesn't allow the defender to touch it and nullify the second assist. Alex Iofalo is the reason that Brad Lambert got a point in his first game of his first NHL in his first NHL game. Uh, credit to him. He had him covered in this position. Not taking, I know some people don't handle these things well. I'm not taking anything away from Brad Lambert's game. I thought he was absolutely phenomenal, but that's what happened in this play. Credit to Alex Iafalo. He had Brad Lambert covered. And now, because of it, Brad Lambert has a picture holding a puck that was the result of his first ever NHL point in his first ever NHL game, Ken. And and such a simple seal, right? Like some guys go for the big hit there. I have followed, just did a great job of getting body position. And then the puck went off his skate, right? It went off his skate and then went to Velarde. No, he the, get he he, oh, sorry, he got him and then stick. got the puck, got his stick. No, out he him. gets his stick in between the player and the board right, and, then and got reaches sorry. and gets his stick to first. the puck before the defender who has all the position. This should be an easy play by the defender. It is a super cagey, super veteran play by Alex Iafalo. Great job by him. Uh, and uh, you have something Great to say, Ken, before I close no, this down? You're good. Great job. Great job by Alex Iafalo, who earns the final Kenny and Rennie. I will throw these in the playoffs as well. The Kenny and Rennie OG Johnson group got you covered play of the game. And hey, do you run a small business in Canada? Look to Canada's number one employee benefits plan, Chambers Plan, to give you a competitive edge. Chambers Plan is the simple, stable, smart choice for over 30,000 businesses countrywide. Visit chamberplan.ca to learn more. Uh, Moving on, Ken, to the keg save of the game. What do you got? Yeah, there are a couple of really important saves in the after the, after the Canucks got to two goals. I think the most important was the rebound save on Pia Suter. Um, that that's right there. That's the tying moment for having to share the Jennings Trophy with you know Paul Maurice and the Florida Panthers. Uh, did a great job of getting his leg out. Yeah, there were a couple of ones earlier on in the game where Brusseau had to be sharp. To me, that was the that was the one that really stood out and uh, you know is going to be the clincher for me. Um, I'll go with that. I've got no problem with that at all. Uh, and that means that that is both Ken's and my keg save of the game. Doesn't matter what we think matters, what you think, send us your hashtag, the keg save of the game. You're automatically entered to win a uh, $50 gift certificate usable at any of the three fine keg locations here in the city of Winnipeg, each location finer than the last and the winner of the keg save of the game from last show, the April 16th show, that would be David Anderson. David, you know what to do. Direct message me at SN Sean Reynolds. Send me your full name, send me an email and I'll have the fine folks at the keg send you a $50 gift certificate usable at any of the three fine keg locations here in the city of Winnipeg, each location finer than the last. Ken, it's been called for a number of times. I've held people <laughs> on so much. I've got to make it last show of the game. Pat Rathwell was texting me on the way home to say, like, you better start the show with the uh, headband on. You can't start the show with the headband because the best part of the headband obviously isn't the headband or me wearing it. It's the music which made this a thing in the first place. So let's make it a late breaking Sean's headband version of the Kenny and Rennie show here, folks. I got the feeling we're going to agree on this one here, Kenny, but it is time for the Transcanner Brewing yeah. Company lamplighter of the game. What do you got? Yeah, GWG, first NHL goal in his NHL debut. It's got to go to Nikita Chibrikov, who, uh, celebration for the ages, great eruption for the second round draft pick in 2021. Uh, I wasn't down there because I was writing the gamer, but um, listen to the interview after, Sean. You were down there. I mean, how about just the enthusiasm for for the young man who uh, gets his first first NHL marker, and it's not just a throwaway um, in a game in a lopsided game. It ends up being the GWG, and it's just an absolutely like this is one that you know when you're telling your buddy is down the road, what was your first NHL goal like? You don't have to exaggerate because it's an absolute beauty. Great play by Niederreiter. On the stick, boom, by Nikita Chibrikov off the post against one of the best goalies in the National Hockey League. 
off the post and in. He sees the red light go on and absolute great fist pump and yeah, celebration. Time. And th- like if you've played at any level and scored a big goal at any time, absolutely awesome to see the ab- pure joy. Uh, just like he was playing in a backdoor outdoor rink growing up as a kid. Um, just a awesome, awesome moment for a young man who, you know, probably has a lot of NHL games ahead of him, but uh, just a really exciting moment for him and his family. And, and I love the fact that he's, you know, thanking everyone who got him there in that interview, Sean, you were right beside him. And it just uh, to be able to soak that in and share it with, uh, you know, they say it takes a village to help get a player there. And the fact that he recognized that in that moment, I thought was just, uh, uh, just sort of put the cherry on top for uh, what the lamplighter is all about. Uh, this was a gorgeous goal, not just because, uh, like I saw the, there's a great camera angle of that goal and you see how much space there was. And it's literally one of these things where he puts it just on the inside of the post and in, and if it would have been even, you know, a half inch to the right, it's probably hitting the goaltender's shoulder and, and not going in. It is a perfectly placed shot, but he's the guy who starts to play. He's the guy who gets in on the four check disrupts the puck, uh, gets it over to Nino Niederreiter, Nino, and then goes and gets to a spot where Nino Niederreiter can get it back to him and pops it in the back there. Like I said, there's getting your first, uh, NHL goal and then there's getting your first NHL goal in your first NHL game on a play that you created you went out with a bunch of other veterans you created the hustle you created the turnover you created the momentum you capitalized on it you put it in the back of the net you had the celly of the last eight games maybe and you did so in a manner that maybe will mean something. I don't think it will down the stretch because I don't think we're going to see the Vancouver Canucks in the conference final. But if they do, Chibrikov will sit back and say to himself, I did that. I'm the guy who did that. What a huge, meaningful goal in his first game. Uh, congratulations to him. That is a well-earned TCB Transcanner Brewing Company lamp lighter of the game. Uh, and you know what that means. Uh, it doesn't matter what we say. matters what you say. Share with us your hashtag lamp lighter, tra- TCB lamp lighter, and you are automatically entered to win a frosty, delicious a pack of lamp lighter amber ale. Brought to you by our friends at Transcanner Brewing Company. If you cannot wait for Kenny and Rennie to gift you your eight pack, head on down to Transcanner brewing company join them in their tap room for great pizza great food great beer great atmosphere great people phenomenal place which you will discover if you join us at our kenny and rennie year ender where we will send her uh it's probably going to be uh tentatively two mondays after the winnipeg jets are eliminated from the playoffs or hoist the Stanley Cup. It's going to be a blast regardless. We can't wait to see you all there. Uh, And that brings me to our winner of the TCB Lamplighter of the game. That would be from our last show, Disgruntled Wheat, who I saw on this show. Disgruntled Wheat, you know what to do. Direct message me at SN Sean Reynolds. Send me your full name. Send me an email uh, and I will have or I will send you a voucher for a frosty, delicious eight pack of lamp lighter amber ale brought to you by our friends at Trans Canada Brewing Company. If you don't know it, you will know it as long as you claim it. It is the absolute nectar of the gods. Kenny, anything to say before we go? Well, just a couple things to tie up a few loose ends. I mean, with the win today, the Jets will tie a franchise record for victories set in 2017-18, the year they went on their most impressive run to the Western Conference Final. Uh, they finished second in the Western Conference, as you mentioned, just three points behind the Dallas Stars. And the difference being losing the first three games of the season series, right? I mean, again, you can you can pick at anything all you want, but I mean, as Rick Bonus has been pretty adamant, Sean, he believes that if the Jets' special teams had even just been average, league average, middle of the pack, they would have won the conference probably and maybe even the president's trophy uh the fact that they you know best team in canada by one point over the canucks i mean again it may not mean anything uh whether and unless these two teams happen to meet the Com- western conference final uh some interesting things going on in the out-of-town scoreboard it's not going to be done by the time the show is over but vegas lost to anaheim and la was up and now they're down four three to the chicago blackhawks so yeah still waiting to see when it, it you know ESPN is reporting that the game is Sunday night here in Winnipeg at 6 p.m. It's done. Yeah, it's done. 
15. So I, I, I don't know the time, but it's Sunday. The game is it will be on Sunday. Yeah. So it, it sounds like Sunday, Tuesday, but we'll we'll wait and see. And it's it's an exciting time on a lot of fronts. Um, yeah. I mean, hey, we got to give the Jets credit. They look like they were going into a late season kind of. I'm not sure if it was as boon and as last season, but definitely uh, ill timed. And as it turns out, everyone was wondering if they could get it turned around. They definitely flipped the switch, and now it's time to see what they can do when the lights are shining brightest. Uh, I agree with you. It's a big, it's a big playoff ahead for Connor Hellebuck. We've talked a lot about uh, legacy and all these sorts of things. Um, Hellebuck has put up good numbers in the playoffs. There's no doubt about that. They're very close to his regular season numbers, but uh, he needs he needs himself a Carey Price type of moment where. Um, he, he shows that he is the elite of the elite and that's got to translate into, you know, multiple rounds and, and occasionally, you know, putting the team on his back and, and seeing how far they can take them. And the good news for Connor, Sean, is that he's got a great team, a team with a lot of depth, a team that's playing very structured hockey and a team that, you know, could potentially get on the magic carpet and go for a, a really interesting ride here in the spring. And I uh, can't wait for the series. I think it's going to be absolutely fabulous. And can't wait to be covering it with you, my friend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, okay. So um, just just to build on that point that you made, like Connor Hellebuck now has a team that is, and I've said this before, there's a reason why the Winnipeg Jets look the same with Lauren Bressois as they do with uh, um, uh, Connor Hellebuck. And again, and I know people get bothered by this. I still don't understand why why they do. I've said this before and I say it now. To me, Connor Hellebuck is the runaway victor of the Vezin Trophy this year. Um, but this team needs to be given its flowers for what it has done defensively this year. Even on a night like tonight, like that, this game did not look like it was going to turn out for the Vancouver Canucks because the Jets, even with all those different players, they're just, th- their system, the Rick bonus system, and you heard him get credit from the Dallas Stars after they played them the last time. That's uh, that's Rick bonus hockey. That's Bones hockey. Um, give credit to that system. Now, what? Hey, and I've said this in the past. Um, you take a look at the Tampa Bay Lightning and what Vasilevsky has done in the playoffs. He's done it behind a very, very capable team that knew how to shut things down and grind things down at the most opportune moments. We're going to see Connor Hellebuck have that kind of team in front of him, which positions him, I think, extremely well and most definitely the best he's ever, best opportunity he's ever had in his career to be or, or to get that kind of playoff success that we've seen from guys like Vasilevsky. As I've said, it's important before all these people out there who talk about him being the greatest goaltender of a generation. Listen, ability-wise, I think he's right there, but you got to get it done in the playoffs if you're going to make that claim. You can't be a goaltender that has had very little playoff success and try and hang their name beside people who have done that. Even Carey Price, who never won a cup, essentially took his team to a couple of conference finals and a Stanley Cup final. Like that's on his resume. That's his pedigree. Connor Hellebuck needs to do that to get that on his pedigree. We're going to be talking playoffs. Uh, you want to do a playoff preview show? When are we doing it? So tomorrow at three o'clock, Ken, is that what's happening? As long as we can get the writing done, that's kind of the plan. If we can make it happen, I think. All right. Well, I could start early. Uh, I could have uh, some stuff going on, but uh, let's, let's shoot for that. So, Hey yep. folks, uh, we'll get the show made up. We'll have it in the system three o'clock tomorrow. We will do our playoff preview show, which we absolutely love doing. We get some uh, picks on record. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, I've got a good bet that I do every year with a buddy out of Calgary on the playoff series. So I'm going to make sure I get those picks in with him before we get to the show because I'm not tipping my cards for him. Uh, I absolutely cleaned his clock the <laughs> bubble year. I won every single series the entire playoffs except for one. Uh, so I'm planning on doing the same thing again. Anyway, uh, thank you everybody for uh, all you do. It has been uh, our honor that you have given us your time as much as you have this season to come listen to us talk hockey. We hope we made it worth your while. Uh, Thank you for that. Thank you for your comments in the chat room. Thank you for absolutely everything. This ride is so much fun because you are on it with us. Ken, uh, just absolutely love doing this with you. Uh, It's awesome. The partnership that we have created is something that I value and I cherish beyond words. Uh, And uh, I will say this to everybody out there. um, If you appreciate the conversations that we put up 82 plus times 
this season in this space, I would implore you to please Please appreciate uh, the contributions by our sponsors who fight to keep the conversation going in this space. For us, that would be Vittorio Rossi, Pristian Roofing, Cambrian Credit Union, Sweet Lou Ferlin, the Johnston Group, the Kenny and Renny OGs, the Keg, TCB. They're going to continue with the, on with us into the playoffs, but we just want to say to all our sponsors, thank awesome. you so much uh, for the contributions that you've made. It means a ton to us that uh, you put your faith in us, uh, and we hope that we've gone out of our way to earn that faith and to continue earning it. Thank you to them. Thank you to all of you. We will see you tomorrow at three o'clock for the Kenny and Rennie playoff preview. Bye-bye.